Today I'm going to talk to you about the results section of your paper. I cannot articulate to you enough that all of this information and more detail is found in the Now What document, which is located on the web page, which you all should have been to at some point in time. It's kmsagain.com. Um, under SAE tab, and you find your grades, and you'll be able to click on it. But I cannot, like, you You need to look at this Now What paper instructions and the rubric so that you're making sure that you get everything that is needed. These videos are just meant to help highlight a few of the options that you need in order to uh, turn in your paper to me. So today we're going to work on the results section. So once again, a new document. Every page gets its own document. Make sure you save it. Also make sure that this is at 12 point Times New Roman font. All right, now we're ready to rock and roll. So in our results section, um, first of all, the results section is not necessarily a lot of writing, but it is a lot of graphs. So the results section is very factual. There are no conclusions made here. All you are doing is telling me what your results are. The section should start with one to two paragraphs telling the, the readers exactly what was discovered and what patterns and relationships exist. So the first paragraph should be the, uh, basically the first paragraph is a summary, a written summary of the results. Whoops, I'm sorry, I can't type today. So for our fishing line, the first paragraph might be for the three trials of this experiment, fishing line A, a gander, uh, gander mountain, averaged a 35 pound, sorry I did that wrong, how about a 125 gram weight fishing line B from Crazy Fisherman averaged a 115 gram weight and fishing line B generic genera um, averaged a 135 gram weight before breaking. And obviously, I want to expand on this. I am just writing this as short as possible so that I can use this as an example. But that is how you written summarize your results. Um, then you would uh, continue because it says that you need to tell me what patterns or trends or relationships were observed. The second trial, all three fishing lines broke at their lowest weight. I'm setting this up because then when I start talking about discussion and conclusions, I can talk about what went wrong with the second trial. Um, maybe maybe um, the line was wet or I was doing my experiment outside and it was raining and or um, like or maybe the line was completely dry. Like that's where you're starting to point out the patterns that a that showed up. Not necessarily, you don't explain it. Like, no one here am I saying why. I'm just setting it up. So after I've done my one to two paragraphs, remember in a paragraph has to five sentences. So you're looking at five to ten sentences. This is not enough. Once again, I repeat, this is not enough. But this is just an example. Um, then now I'm going to do my standalone data in the form of tables. So for this for this project, you have to have a minimum of three tables and graphs, of which two of them have to be graphs. Now, a table 
just so you guys understand what I'm saying here, a table specifically is a table. Like it is a table. Like you're inserting a data table. Okay, but you don't want to insert it there. You want to insert it down here. Um, that is a table. And underneath it, I'm going to make my font size a eight point font, and I'm going to label this table. And if you don't label it, you're not going to get you're going to get low points. Table one point one uh, summary of raw data. Okay. Now. I'm going to also have to do graphs, and I understand that a lot of you have not had the opportunity to learn how to do graphs, which is why on the website there is a tutorial that you can watch that shows you how to make graphs. I'm going to zip through this very quickly so that you um, uh, can uh, see what I'm talking about. So if I want to put insert a graph, so I'm going to go here to insert chart, which I guess is what Word calls it, and I'm going to click on chart. And you want to make sure that you have the right kind of chart. Whether or not you have independent and dependent variables is going to determine whether or not you should do a bar graph or a line graph. A majority of you will try to use a bar graph, but you need to use a line graph. Once again, if you don't know what type of graph you should use, then you need to see Mrs. Williamson and she will help you with that. Um, or um, try, I'll tell you when you turn in your rough draft whether or not you need to switch the type of graph you have. So I'm going to just insert a line graph, click on OK. It's going to bring up an Excel document, which will allow me to put in my information. So I have fishing line A, fishing line B, fishing line C, and I don't have a category 4, so I'm going to uh, delete that, or actually just move this up a little bit, and we'll, whoops, nope, not what I want to do. I can just move this up a little bit. Um, and this is trial one, two, and three. Now I one twenty, one twenty eight, and one thirty five. Um, oh wait, this one needs to be one twenty. This one needs to be one twenty eight. Um, I don't remember what my averages were. I'm just gonna make up some data. So don't you do that. Okay, and you'll notice over here, so once I'm done with that, then I will just exit out of my chart, and then here's my data. Um, and you'll notice that it's, or here's my graph. And you'll notice that I have stuff on here, but what I am missing on here is I do not have any labels. And I need to make sure that you have access labels. So you want to put title below the access, and you want to put a uh, title a rotated title on the side and you so you need to make sure that your graphs have those titles there and um, that they have a um, where is that data label I want to go to the center nope I don't want to do that well that's fine um, but you want to make sure that you have some sort of uh, title of your graph as well and then underneath your graph once again, in eight point font, you're going to put chart or graph uh, 1.1 shows a comparison of fishing line okay and then once again you're going to put in multiple graphs. The more graphs that you can have and the more the ways that your data is displayed, the better it is. There is a point where you get to be have too many, but this type of a project, you're going to be able to show me this one where you show me all three lines with all three trials. You'll be able to show me each line individually, independently, or you could do each trial independently if you wanted to, too. If you do each trial independently, then it's not a line graph, so you need to make sure that you're paying attention to that as well. You want to make sure that each graph has a heading, labels, and uses proper measurements. And once again, this needs to be in grams. So or here on my axis title, I would type in here that this is uh, um, the number of, or no, the weight in grams at breaking point. So you need to make sure that you indicate what that measurement is. 
so that you so that um, I know that you are using grams because you want to make sure that you're using a metric relationship and each one has to have a caption and they should identify that relationship in the graph or table so that's the results page so then the next thing that you're going to do will be your uh, discussion and conclusion which I will talk about in the next video